And the next speaker is uh uh Professor Ray Chu Tai from uh uh from University of uh, uh, Guangdong University of Technology. Um, the Professor Yuan Chu Tai um, is an expert in um, machine learning and uh, statistics. And he has uh, published uh, more than 30 papers, uh, including some very important conference paper like uh, SML, Sigma, uh, and also some um, uh, uh, top journals like bioinformatics oh. and uh, neural networks and the uh, pattern uh, recognition. So today, uh, Professor Tai uh, is giving us a talk on uh, hidden uh, causal representation learning with visual uh, stargate variables. Let's welcome Professor Tai. Okay, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zui Chu Tai. Thanks for Jin Tu's introduction. And thanks for organizing this excellent conference. This is my, it's my great honor to be here. Today, I'm going to talk about something about hidden causal representation learning via surrogate variables. Here is the outline. First, I will give a brief introduction to the causal model, its latent variables, and the, the textured condition. Then, I'm going to talk about something about. Uh, extend the well-known independent, independent noise conditions to the generalized independent noise condition while the surrogate variables. Finally, I will show some how to use these conditions to learn the hidden causal representations. Okay, <clears throat> as we all know, discovering causal relations among latent variables is important in many real-world applications. For example, to design a proper psychotherapy <coughs> psycho program, we need to understand the causal relations among the low conflict, conflict and uh, depersonalization and the personal accomplishment and so on filters. However, these variables of interest are usually unobserved and we can only make use of the measured variables. For example, <coughs> the re response levels from the questions for low complete factors and so on later factors. One of the most used model for this problem is the linear latent variable model. In this model, there are two components, the measurement model and the structural model. The measurement model, uh, the red lines, is about the relation between the measurement model uh, between the measured variables and the latent variables. And the structural model, uh, the blue lines, is about the causal relation among the latent variables. Thus, there are two tasks to learn this linear latent variable model. They are how to find the latent variables from the observed variables, and how to determine the causal relation among the latent variables. Okay. For this task, <clears throat> for this two task, two task, a lot of excellent work has been proposed. Here, I will briefly revisit the most related one, the textured condition proposed by Clark in 2006. Textured condition mainly uses the covariance to learn, <coughs> mainly use the covariance among the measurable, among the measured variables to detect the existence of the latent variables. Straightforwardly, given for, <coughs> given for measured variable x1 to x4, if they belong to one latent variable, then this three, this three tetrad condition holds. For the, <coughs> then we can use this tetrad conditions to infer the existence the existence of the latent variables. For example, <coughs> if this set of conditions holds, then we will infer there's only one latent variable. If the, this set of latent variables holds, condition, textual condition holds, they, we will infer there are two latent variables. Okay. <coughs> Using the, this the textual condition, we can de 
distinguish a lot of causal structures. But however, considering the following two structures, we will find uh, they hold the same set of textured conditions. That means we cannot distinguish these two structures. So how to this problem? Moreover, <clears throat> if there are only three latent variables, we even cannot detect the existence of the latent variables. For example, we can't distinguish which one is the case. We may think <clears throat> how to, we may think what, info, what kind of information is helpful for to distinguish is to, di to distinguish them. Remember that the textual condition only use the second moment information. So we are thinking, can we use some other information to identify the structures? Through research, we found the non gaussianity can provide more information and help us identify those two causal structures from the measured variables. Okay, uh, following this above intuition, we will show how to solve the textual problem by extending the well-known independent noise conditions to in non gaussian data to the generalized <coughs> independence independent noise condition with the help of surrogate variables. Okay, let's uh, first let uh, briefly revisit the independent noise conditions for the non gaussian data. Uh, before the, introducing the independent noise condition, let's have a look at the, at the data generation process. We assume that the data is generated by this linear formulation and the X is the cause of Y and the E is the noise, is the non-Gaussian noise. In here, <coughs> here, when the, we can find that when the noise is Gaussian, Sorry, sorry. When the, when the noise is Gaussian, we will find the independent noise condition holds in both directions. In the causal direction, it holds, and similarly in the anti causal direction. When the noise, but when the noise is uniform, we will find the residual is independent X in the causal direction, but not in the anti causal direction. So we can use this asymmetry to determine the causal direction. A straightforward, a straightforward question is, can we use the independent noise condition to infer the causal directions for two latent variables? For example, to <coughs> about the causal direction between L1 and L2. Fortunately found this independent noise condition still holds on the latent variables. For example, we take this one, for example, X1 can be represented in this form and in this form and the independent noise assumption still holds. Then if we use this way to reformulate this one, we have finally have this tetrad uh, this child condition, that is the independent noise condition still holds in this child, can, in this child can structure. We only need to use the SK as the sloppy variables for the L2. But in the anti-causal direction, we find this child condition does not hold. That means that means we can use this child conditions to infer the causal direction between two latent variables. Okay. <clears throat> the following question is how to formalize the child conditions uh, based on the above in intuition. We summarize the child condition as follows. Suppose SI, SJ, and SK are distinct and correlated variables that all noise variables are non-Gaussian. 
we can define the pseudo residual of XIJ referred to the surrogate variable SK as follows. Yeah, at this one. Then uh, we can compare it with the normal residual. We can find that this pseudo residual is just to replace the XJ with the XK. Yes, to replace with the surrogate variable. Then we can see that <coughs> the child condition is as follows. That is SIJ and SK satisfies the child condition if and only if the pseudo procedure is independent of the XK. Okay, <coughs> then we have successfully extended the noise condition to the latent variables. And the following question is, it still can not solve this problem because we will find that in this structure, X1 and S3, S1 and S3 have two latent parents, L1 and L2. Thus, the following question is, can we further extend the above surrogate strategy to multiple variables? Okay, the answer of course is yes. Let's recall the independent loss condition again in this structure. Okay, consider the variable set X1 and X3 as a vector. We will have the causal function as follows. We can see that the independence between the EY and the, the latent variables L1 and L2 still holds. Similar as the step in the child condition, we can use the X, X4 and the X5 as the surrogate of L1 and L2. And uh, we, we, have, we further have this one. In this one, we can find that the independent noise assumption still holds. Okay. <laughs> After have this one, we, the following question is, how can we summarize this in, in a dream condition? <clears throat> following, firstly, following the DS seller, we will find the independent noise assumption is equivalent to this condition. That is, there exists a non-zero vector omega satisfies this condition. Okay. Secondly, by using the X4 and the X2 as the surrogate, um, surrogate variable of L1 and L2, we further have this one. Yeah. And finally, after reformulation, we come to the dream condition that is exist a non zero vector omega satisfies this condition. Okay. Finally, we summarize the dream condition as follows. That is, that why follow the dream condition if and only if there exists a non zero omega satisfies this condition. Yeah. And the, the transpose of the Omega times Y is independent from Z. Yeah. We want we also want to see that the tri the tri triad condition can be seen as a special case of the dream condition. For example, this triad condition can be reformulated as a dream condition as follows. Okay. Next, we will show how to use conditions to learn to different latent variable models. Okay, the first one is about a linear non-Gaussian latent variable model. We call them Lingala. <clears throat> okay, there are four different assumptions of Lingala. The first one is a measurement assumption. That means there's no observed variable in X, being any assessor of any latent variables in L. And the second one is the non gaussianity assumption, and the third one is the double PO children variable assumption. That means for each latent variable, there are at least two late two many variables. And the last one is the purity assumption. That is, there's no delighted edge between the observed variables. Okay. 
based on <coughs> based on this assumption, we will propose a two two step algorithms. The first step is the find the causal state causal clusters. A cluster causal cluster is a set of variables sharing the same latent variables as parents. Furthermore, we can detect the causal order of the latent variables. Now we can basically recover the causal structure if needed after estimating the co coefficients. That is, <clears throat> okay, let's move, to the, move on to the first step. Following, we will show how to find the causal structure causal clusters with the help of this running example. Intuitively, the variables from a same cluster, for example, X1, X5 and X6 should be share the same gene condition because they are equivalent in the graph. Okay, for example, if we find X5 and X6 satisfies this gene condition, we will find X6 and X5 are in a cluster one. One, one more, similarly, if we find X7 and X8 follow, satisfy this gene condition, then X7 and X8 is a cluster. And uh, lastly, we will put all the uh, other variables into one cluster. Yeah, this is uh, belonging to one cluster. Okay, after we found the clusters, the next question is how to determine the causal order among the latent variables. We use the, <coughs> we use the uh, dream condition to infer the causal orders. First one, we can see that if we have this set of dream conditions, we will conclude that L1, L2 is causal earlier, earlier than the L3 and L4. And uh, one more, if we find this set of conditions, we will further have the L3 is causally earlier than L4. Okay, uh, and uh, that finishes the Running the example of the, our algorithms, we also applied our algorithms to some simulated simulated data. Okay, we simulated the data following the link link model, include four cases with different deck structures about the measure. Variables and the latent variables. Our goal is to find the clusters that is determine the location of the latent variables. So we have three different measure metrics. They are latent omission, latent commission, and the mismeasurement. In the result I gave in this table, we can find that our more proposed more algorithm is more efficient and can find all the can find the, all the collect latent variables. We can see this. Okay. We also applied our algorithms to discover the underlying causal structures behind the teacher's burnout. The data set contains 28 measured variables. The result is showing this one, showing this feed. We can find that. Most of the results are consist with the cloud truth given them by the experts. So this further verifies the effectiveness of our model. And also it allows us that uh, the cloud truth proposed by the expert is reasonable, okay? Until now, what we have discussed is that there is no direct causal relationship among the latent variables. Uh, uh, there is no direct causal relation between the measured variables. So if there is a causal relation between two measured variables that are influ 
earned by hidden variables at this at the same time. How do we learn the causal structure? If the latent variables from observed word of from the observed data, here is a toy example. Specifically, the black lines are the in the left figure represent the data of measured <coughs> variables x1 to xm, and the red lines represent the data of the latent variables f1 to fm. How to use the causal discovery to learn the causal diagram on the left from the observation on the date on the left? This problem raises two challenges. The first one is how to detect the latent confounders with impure measured, impure measured variables. And the second one is how to recover local structures accurately in the presence of latent confounders. To solve this problem, we developed the Fluido algorithms. Essentially, the Fluido algorithms use a hybrid strategy to learn the model. Firstly, we use the Fluido method to contrast a peg based on the conditional independent test. And the second step is we infer the local causal structures using the independent noise conditions. Third, it tests the shared latent confounders using the triad, triad conditions. Okay, we are going to the uh, second step because the first step is simply achieved by the existing cause scattered search method such as FCI, RFCI, and so on. Then in this step two, based on the scattered we infer the local causal structures with independent noise. That is, we will find X1 is the parents of S2, S8, and S7, and S4. Similarly, we will find X2 is the parents of S6 and uh, X3 using the independent noise assumption, uh, using the independent noise condition. Up step two, the causal structure we got is shown in the left. Part of them have already been oriented. Okay. Uh, to detect the shared latent co-founder, we introduce the maximum click to detect the latent co-founder. Latent co-founder. We found that <coughs> the latent co-founder, the undetermined causal edges among variables affected by the same latent co-founder come from a click. In this graph, we can see that there are two maximum click among them. They are X5, X7, and S8, and uh, another is X4 and S7. In, the, in each mass click, we can detect the shared latent confounders by the child condition. For example, for X5 to X, X for X5, X7, and X8, suppose the local structure is showing as this one, we can see that this graph entails three, these three child conditions. On the contrary, if there are two latent co-founders, there can only one child conditions. They are, therefore, we can conclude that for three observed variables, X, I, X3, X, K, with under determined edges between each pair of them in the graph a bit after step two. If and only if three child conditions hold among XIJK, then SIJK are directly influenced by a same latent co-founder. And each pair of each pair of observed variables are not directly connected, connected. Okay. We uh, conduct some simulator experiments to show the performance of our model. We simulate we simulate the data following following the LV data with different DAG structures, DAG structures, and then we apply our algorithms on them. We aim to detect the latent variables and recover the four causal structures. From these figures, we can see that our method can collectively collect, recover most measured variables 
that are directly influenced by the little variables. From the this figures, we can see that our proposed algorithm is more efficient <coughs> than the existing methods. Yeah. Okay. We apply. Okay, we also apply the our algorithms to discover the un, under the cost structure from sex data. This data set is mainly about the secular floating concentration in single cells. The data set contains nine value measured variables. This one is the result returned by our algorithm. Our this one is the cloud truth. We can see that our method can return most of the edges, but not the other algorithms. Moreover, we can see that the result FCI PW didn't define any edge from the FCI result, while a PC per C Lingam failed to find the code orders, the, while the delete Lingam contains many redundant edges. This all demo, demonstrates the importance of considering the existence of latent co-founders in this problem. Okay, as a summary, we want to say, first, independent noise assumption still holds in the existence of latent variables. Second, we extend the independent noise <coughs> condition to the generalized independence noise condition by viewing the latent variable and the measured variable in a uni unified way. So the sloping variable is a promising solution for the latent variables in the linear case. Uh, we also want to say that hidden representation learning is still on the way and there are a lot of work needed to, to do. For example, can we relax the constraints of the non-Gaussian And so, okay. Uh, that's all. Uh, we, finally, I want to thank the courses and my students. That's all. Uh, thanks for your attention. And uh, the code is available at the, my homepage. And for details, maybe you can contact me through the email. OK, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for your attention. Yeah, th thank you, Professor Chai, for the great talk. So uh, when there, there are hidden uh, variables, uh, learning the causal structure is a very difficult problem. Uh, so be because of the time, so we leave no question and discussions here. If you have any questions, please do ask via the chat. And I think Professor Chai will uh, answer them.